Hi everybody, it's Helen Ronenberg and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get your catalogue into Pinterest so that you can become a certified merchant if the platform that you're using doesn't currently have the option for you to actually create the, uh, to do it automatically. It's a little bit tricky but it's actually not that hard and you'll find that it will be really really simple once I explain it to you. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to create your catalog. Now, it's very easy. I will give you a link to the catalog example in uh, below the video so that you can just grab it. But we're just going to go through each column and I'll explain to you where you can find the information. So the first one is the ID. Now I use the ID that my um, my checkout system actually creates for their product. So when you create a, a product in whatever tool you're using, it's going to create an ID. I would suggest that you use that ID, but really you can use any ID just so that you are, con but you just need to be consistent uh, across the board in using it. And that'll help you later on when you start doing tracking and things like that. So that's what I use over here. Then the item group. Now, this is just, more information, the more information you put into your catalog, the better it's going to be for your shop as well and how Pinterest is going to know when to show your products or not. So um, your catalog, say for instance, you've got tops. So then you might have t-shirts or blouses or uh, crop tops and that type of stuff. So it depends on how you want to be, wanting to be categorizing it. The other thing is that the title, obviously the name of the product and then a description, be, be pretty descriptive as much as you can within the description. The link where you're selling the product, really important because you're going to be tagging your products on your pins and you need to be able to send them directly to your product with that. Uh, the link, the image link so that Pinterest can bring that in. Uh, the price, it's by default, I reckon it's going to be um, in stock. And unless you're selling old stuff, um, it's probably much going to be new condition. Uh, now, these two is the, the Google product codes um, or the Google taxonomy that you need to get. Now, I'll give you a link to this one as well, to this link at the bottom. And that's basically how Google categorizes it. And this is really important if you also wanting to use Google's catalog. Uh, I think it's relatively new, not, not a lot of people are using it, but it's pretty powerful if you do use it. So just get used to using that, um, the correct taxonomy that Google has approved. And basically you've just got to go through here, go to search, so for instance, if you're looking for tops, say for instance, um, it's not going to find that, but you're just going to have to go through and find search for clothes. I don't know why it doesn't want to do it. Search clothes, um, but you would go through. This is a massive, massive document. Um, just go through and find your. And there it goes, clothes. So here we go, clothing, accessories, apparel, and then choose the category that's closest to so you've got two kind of like subcategories that you have so here you would then choose say clothing accessories traditional clothing would be your first category and then kimono and underclothes is what your second category would be that's what you're going to be put in there it's not a must but i really suggest that you put that in there because the more information you can put into your catalog the better and if you've got additional photos, maybe you've got a, a you know, a, or another, another view of your product, you can put that in there. The sale price, if there is, the brand, very important. If it is a brand um, that is well known and that you're selling, put that in there because when, especially when you're going to go to Google, uh, use this catalog for Google as well. The brand becomes more important. Gender, leave it blank if it's not applicable. Same as age group, size, and also size type. Uh, shipping is pretty important, right? And I suggest that you put your shipping details in, on your website as well. And this must include how long it takes for the product to ship or to be shipped, who the shipping company is that you're using, and typically how long does it take for the product to arrive as well as refund, all that type of information 
uh, you need to have on your website uh, and you can also put it either the link to your your shipping details or you can actually just add all the shipping details in here i leave this i leave this custom label and adwords redirect to empty so once you've put all your catalog all your products into your catalog you're then ready for the next step now unfortunately for pinterest you can't use google drive as the file source or dropbox or any of these free services where you 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 can or file sharing services you have to either upload it into your wordpress backend if you have a wordpress website if you don't i have an option for you it's a little bit tricky but i'll explain it to you it's doing it through microsoft azure now azure is basically um, just a server an online SaaS um, portal where you can store some data and get a url so it might seem a little bit complicated, but just stick with me. It's actually really e easy. All you have to do is create a uh, Microsoft account, a M Microsoft Azure account. Once you've created and they'll ask you for all kinds of things. You've got to confirm who you are. They'll also ask you for your credit card, but it is free for the, the services that you're going to be using. So there'll be no cost to you unless you've got more than five terabyte, uh, sorry, five gigabyte per year. You're not going to have a problem and for a catalog it's going to have to be a very very big catalog before you use up five um, gig a year in bandwidth so don't worry about that so once you have set up your account you it's going you're going to come to a screen that's going to look very much like this and the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a resource and the resource that we're going to be creating is a storage resource so don't worry about all these other um, Windows servers and SQL servers, that one that you want there is a storage account. You're just going to click on create. And what you will then do is create, obviously you won't have one, so you'll be creating new. It will be your Azure subscription one. Uh, that's going to be standard for everybody who has one. So let's just say test resource. And you're going to click OK. Most of the things you're just going to leave very standard to what it is, depending on where you are at. So I'm in Australia, so I'll just have to go down here, Australia Southeast. And I'm going to put a uh, test product group, product storage. You just give it a name. It doesn't really matter what that is. All of these ones, you're going to just keep them or don't tick anything else. Just leave them as they are. Click next. Click next. Click next. Click next. Click next. Oh, did I go? Did I say create? Oh, review and create. Okay, so now it's reviewing it. Let's see if we can create it. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I was testing, so I've obviously done and used the same name, and I thought I deleted it, but and I thought I could use it again, but it didn't like it. Oh, too many. All righty, let's see if we can go through to it now. Next, review. And now you're going to click on this create. It'll take a little while to set everything up for you, but basically it's creating a little space on one of the Microsoft servers for you to add your files. Okay, so now it's complete. It only took a few minutes, probably about three or four minutes to get it set up. And we're going to go to our resource. We, once we're here, we're now going to create a place where we can actually start sharing our file with Pinterest. And we're going to go over here to file shares. And I'm going to select little plus, And I'm going to say, I'm going to make, say, Pinterest shares.
editing that and I'm going to click on create. And now I'm going to click, click on upload. I'm going to select my file. Oh, so that's one step that I forgot to tell you. Once you've finished with your um, file upload, what you then do is you just go here and you download it as a CSV. So let's just go download, uh, download as a CSV. And when I come here, I am going to upload it. And my downloads and example open. There you go. Oh, I didn't take it. Open. And then I'm going to click on overwrite if it already exists and I'm going to upload it. Once it's uploaded and it shouldn't take long, you're going to go to these three little dots and you are going to get the properties. Grab this URL and this is the URL that you are going to put in as your data source. So it's a little bit tricky. There's a couple of steps. I'll just run them through. So you set up your Pinterest catalog here. You set up your Azure resource group. Once you have your resource group, you then add your space where you are. Oh, sorry, I deleted that one. That's why. Um, your store, so you set up your storage account. Once you have your storage account, you go then and set up your file share. And once you have your file share, you can then just upload your data and then you click on that. Once you have it, you go to the three little dots and go to properties and select the URL. Now what's going to happen is when you want to change it, you just come here and you can upload it. So this is great if you only have a few products. If your products change a lot, uh, there you will have to keep uploading them to this space in your Azure portal. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help. I love Pinterest and love the things that we can do with that resource. Bye for now.